Adam Grimes, and welcome to Module 4, Unit 6 of the Art and Science of Trading. So in this, the last unit in this module, we're going to talk about manual backtesting, which is actually the process by which you learn from the market. It's the best way to learn, right, to see what patterns are there rather than getting a pattern out of a book, to see the patterns that are in the market, to start to understand the edge and how we might trade around that. That's what we're doing. So kind of overview of what we need to do in this process, create a P&L tracking sheet, which we just talked about extensively in the last unit. So you need to do that. We're not going to spend more time talking about it now. We are going to talk about manual backtesting, how to do it, some common mistakes, ways to avoid those mistakes. And then we'll just touch on record keeping again. And then you will do... For your homework for this module, you will do a back test of pullbacks or of some structure of pullbacks. And I think the one of the points here is you've had pages and pages and pages of homework that charts that I have given you, things that where I've been saying, hey, look at this, do this exercise. Now you have you will see with the homework you have less. <laughs> you you have, you have many fewer pages, but just as much work. Why? Because the work has now shifted to you. You are responsible for doing the work. You're responsible for your own success. So don't be put off by the fact that you only have a few pages in the PDF document. You still have a lot of work to do. So what we're doing here is we have a pattern in the market, and we're going to go bar by bar. And I am demonstrating here with a, I thought this was like an old pirate map. It's kind of cool, right? <laughs> with a piece of paper covering up the chart. And then we'll talk about why that might be bad in a moment. But you can see here, this is some type of pullback pattern. Uh, a lot of different ways to structure that. But we've covered up the future, so we don't really know where the market goes. Now, when you, so when you actually do this back test at home, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for the pattern, and then you're, you need to record three prices. Uh, it looks to me like this is actually flipped here. Uh, for some reason, I guess th this is a failure test entry. So, uh, let's flip these. Sorry, I should have caught that in the slide, but it's fine. Uh, th th this was assuming that you would be shorting here. You're actually going long. So the prices you record, you need to record your entry price. You need to record whether, and I, I've said this before, you need to record whether you're long or short. You need to record your initial stop. This is the bare minimum information that you need. Now, if you're actually trading, you will, of course, need market and date and size. But for the purpose of this exercise, the trading size is not even that important. So when you see the pattern, you need to translate this information into your P&L tracking sheet. You can see date, market, type. Uh, th th this, this is an optional column, which you would actually have pullback, not failure test. Um, then you would have your price in, your initial stop, price out is blank because you don't know what you're getting out yet. And I'm suggesting to just use one for the unit. That's fine. You also, another optional thing you can have is a profit target. And I would suggest if you have your entry price, so here you have your price in and you have your stop. If you just take this distance and reflect it to the upside, that will give you your target. So this is a 1R target. A lot of different ways to set targets, but this is one simple way, uh, consistent way that you can get started with. If you know your initial stop, just reflect that to give you an initial target. And that's what is calculated here in the sheet. So then what we're going to do is just move the paper forward bar by bar. And you can see if you bought this, this is not a great example of a pullback to buy, but if you bought this, uh, you would have a loss here, and at some point you record your profit. Uh, the, as I said, that sorry about that example is a short, but you get you get the idea. Couple things to think about: you want to assume that your order will be filled, your limit order will be filled if it trades through, but it must trade through. So what I mean is, if you have an order at 100. 
let's say you are long and you have an order to sell at 100. If the market trades 100, are you filled? Assume not. In reality, you might be filled. This is for your profit-taking order. But if the market trades to 101, then you are filled. So this is true on your profit targets. Your stops, however, do not trade through. The opposite would be true for a stop. If you have a stop order where you're getting out if you're wrong, you have a stop at 99. If it trades 9901, so your your long is coming down to your stop, you are not filled. If it trades 99, then you are filled on your stop there. And in fact, in actual trading, you may even be filled at a worse price. So that's the way to do this. And then you just kind of carry forward bar by bar. Every time you get a new bar, the thing that makes this work. So this is a discretionary form of backtesting. This is not purely algorithmic backtesting, obviously, because you are making the decision bar by bar. And what you have to ask yourself as you uncover each bar, what is your plan? What would you do? And you have to know that for the next bar before you reveal the next bar. If you, you so what you, you can't just, you know, look forward and say, oh, I would have gotten out here. That's not valid. You must go bar by bar. I cannot possibly stress that enough. If this is to have any validity at all, you must go bar by bar. You do not look ahead. So, in other words, you can't say, let's just, let's just pretend you were short and you can't say I would short here and then I would be out here. You can't do that. You need to go bar by bar. That's the only way this has any validity. And then once you have the exit, you then put the exit on your P&L sheet. And that's how you track your trades. Long, short, uh, in, initial stop, where you get out. So, summary. Find the entry, find the pattern. You're using pullbacks. Uh, mark your initial entry. You may wish to record all of these things. You don't necessarily need all of them. Uh, I would suggest if you do use a profit target, have another field where you note if that target was hit. So in other words, you will have some trades, you have some pullback trades where you buy here. And let's just say your profit target is here. You might have a trade that goes up to here and then you end up getting out here. So you're in here. Let's just put numbers on it. Your stop was here. Uh, and so you actually maybe took a 0.6 R profit, but your initial stop was hit. So even though you didn't do anything here, you should still note that your, I'm sorry, I said your initial stop, I misspoke. Your target was hit, not your stop. Your target was hit. So you would note that in your sheet. That's important. Then put your final exit and then continue and keep doing trades. So it really is that simple, but there is a problem. And here's the problem. Look at this setup here. And let's pretend, let's just say, I say you have to make a trade. You have to buy or sell. Are you going to, at this point, are you going to buy or sell this market? If you haven't seen this example, think about it for a moment. What are you going to do? Well, obviously you're going to buy it. Why? Because look at the future. You know, if you are here, you know that there's this great big area here that price somehow goes up into. Now, you don't know how it happens. Maybe it looks like that. 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 But you, one thing that you do know for sure is that price doesn't go under the chart. No way. So you know there is a more likely case for this market to go up. This will bias your results. And that is the most important rule here. The cardinal rule is that you must not have any information in the future. You must not have any leakage of future information, which is what you have here. When I've covered up this this future, you know that somehow price ends up somewhere up in here, even though you're not supposed to be able to see it. So... This is a problem that you need to be very sensitive to 
any, and I cannot emphasize this enough, just like I said, you've got to go bar by bar, that's true, but if there's any way you're getting any information from the future, then you have a problem. Here, do you have any information? Of course. We know we're headed down in this direction, and we know at least that we're not headed up here because it's not on the chart. So you would, at this case, have a flat or bearish bias. Actually, you probably should have a bearish bias, but certainly not a bullish bias because you know all the upside you could get is here while the potential downside is huge. So this idea of covering it up, a chart up with a piece of paper, that's not the best way to do it. The better way is to have a piece of software that lets you page forward one bar at a time, or some pieces of software will even let you run a simulation where it just feeds you one bar at a time. At least with almost every software package, you can scroll one bar at a time. But even then, you need to be careful. Do you get any hints from your indicator lines? Do you see any slight bit of the next bar? Look at this example. So here's what happened, okay? Market was here. You had a big gap up. That's what actually happened. Now, let's say we're looking at this bar. So here are two examples. In example one here, look, you see that? So this is the difference of an example two, the next bar does not exist at all. And example one, because the way most software, pa well, wait, software packages calculate these indicator lines, they calculate the points and then they connect them. And even though this is the point, it knows the future point is somewhere up here. So it's already started to draw this line. And that is not a small thing. This will, you might not even have realized it, but you would implicitly, intuitively have picked up on this pattern and you'd have had a much more bullish bias here than here. So you need to be careful of that. Correct for that in whatever way you can. But above all, just be, be very <laughs> afraid and I use that word with a smile, but be very afraid of any future data leaking in because it will completely compromise your results and make, make this exercise worthless. So as you're doing this, questions to ask, where did you get in? you got to define the pattern, right? That, and that's what you're going to do. you got to define the pattern. Where did you actually get in? Where was your initial stop? If you're using a profit target, maybe you want to start with 1R. Was it hit? And then go bar by bar, what decisions would you have made? You're trying as much as possible to replicate the experience of seeing the market develop in real time. Now, of course, this is less than perfect, and we can have a long discussion about all of the reasons why this procedure is less than perfect. It certainly is, but it's a valuable learning tool, and it's a valuable learning tool on several levels. You're using it to explore both the patterns in the market and yourself. And so when you do this, then you're also thinking about Where's your final exit? Homework. You need to define a pullback pattern. And we've talked about this. You may want to review some of the stuff from the first module, but basically what you're looking for is the market makes a sharp move and then has some kind of pullback and you get in. So you need to define at least the sharp move, the pullback. Maybe you need to define, does it doesn't need to be in a trending market. You need to define where exactly are you going to get in? Where do you put your stop? Where's your target? And then what decisions would you have made bar by bar? These are the things that you need to think about before you even start this exercise. You need to, def and this will boil down to a precise entry condition, which may very well be, have an element of discretion, but you still need to be able to explain it so that you can replicate it. And then just go through a handful of trades, keep records and see what you find. What's a handful of trades? Well, I would start with 20 ish. It's not nearly enough to have any statistical significance, but do 20 and then maybe go back and rethink your setup, make some changes to how you're defining all of these. There are a lot of pieces here, right? A pullback is a statistically valid pattern, but where you're getting in and out, where you're putting your stop, all of these decisions matter. So then go back, refine the question, and then do a few more. I would think 
And this will take some time. This will probably take several days to do. Um, I would think perhaps even a couple weeks. I would think that getting a set of, say, a few hundred trades would be un- under one specification. If you're doing 20 trades times times 10 different specifications, uh, 10 different ways, that's probably not what you want to do. You want to have one set of pullback rules that you settle on and then maybe get a couple hundred trades and just collect them and we'll do we'll talk about how to do some analysis and see what edge is there and keep in mind this is if this is your first time doing this it may be kind of slow it may be difficult but this is very important work and again just a reminder you have many fewer pages of homework but the work you're doing is now your work and is very very valuable so that is the conclusion of this unit and this module. Please don't rush the homework. Take time to really do it. And I will see you back when you're ready for the next module. Thank you very much.